this video we're going to have a look at Windows XP RTM. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail, this will just be a quick one. I just want to install it, have a look at the differences, there are a few, and try and activate it because I've read online that it's difficult to activate Windows XP now. I'm not going to have it connected to the internet because it's just not worth it. It's, it's RTM, what's the point? Like no modern web browsers are going to run on it or anything like that. So we'll just install it, we'll activate it, and then just have a quick look around. The first difference is on the boot up screen. As you can see, it says Windows XP Professional. Home Edition would have said Home Edition, and the bar would have been green rather than blue. They changed that with the service pack. It, it, it removed the, the SKU, and it just changed the bar to blue, no matter if you're on Home or Pro. I guess they've done that just to make it more consistent. Windows Update provides you with critical software updates and hardware support files for XP. Nah, done anymore. I, I don't understand why really they didn't leave like some sort of service going for these older OS's or just create a roll up pack. I mean unsupported means unsupported, they're a business and it is what it is but like Ubuntu for example keeps their old repos, you just have to change it to archive but it still lets you do it. Now if you're outside the US you'll be familiar with this, having to change this. And you have to press apply on every stage or else it's going to end up not saving the settings correctly and you're going to have a bunch of keyboards and stuff. So like here, I need to change this to UK, press apply and then remove. Because if I don't it won't actually remove it because it's already selected. It's quite weird actually but yeah I guess most of you watching this video probably don't come across that. Another difference with the Home Edition is that it doesn't ask you for administrator password during setup, which means the admin account is there, it's enabled with a blank password, so you can access it any time from the login screen by logging in as administrator. It's really crazy how lax the security was on XP, even for the time. Now this process is just flying by, it's on a virtual machine on a decent PC with an SSD. I remember back in the day doing this on the Pentium 3, and it would take, like literally, 40 minutes, if not more. I think the worst PC I tried it on was a Pentium 2, which is actually minimum spec, but it, it ran terribly. I really, really don't recommend that. It would have been better off with Windows 9X, even over 2K really. See, this is interesting, this part about net passport integration. Now, people kick up about Windows 8, 10 and 11 requiring you to log in. Well, it's been around since Windows XP. And even on Windows 11, although it kind of sucks that you have to do this, you can skip this during the OOBE by pressing Shift F10 and typing in OOBE backslash bypass NRO. The first boot is now complete and we're entering the OOBE. And here's that awesome music. Now there really wasn't a lot to do here because it's not connected to the internet or anything like that. All I had to do was enter a username and then it went straight to the end screen so that's pretty cool. It saves messing around I guess. And now we'll log in for the first time. And there's the iconic desktop wallpaper. I'm going to install the VMware tool so we can get a better resolution. So here's the interesting thing, you just put the VMware Tools Media in and it just auto plays, it's a big security issue and it just seems mad that that was ever the case to just auto run absolutely everything. I always disabled that because it's just mad, I mean you could plug in if, you know, if you're being extravagant about it, then you could plug in a USB flash drive and it'll just run whatever crap's on there. Um, that's interesting. I think that's going to be due to the Windows installer being out of date, so I'll see if I can download a newer version and I'll put it in the description in case you want to try this for yourself. So the file is still available on the Microsoft Update catalogue, so that's cool. So I think if we install this it should solve the issue, we should be able to install the VMware tools. Yep, yeah, that's done the trick, that's working now. You actually have to do that on the older Windows 9 Nexus as well if you want to install the VMware tools, you have to update Windows installer first. That's how I knew to just go straight for that. And as you can see, it's already begging us to activate. Right, the VMware tools are installed. I've increased the resolution to 1080p, so we've got a lot more room to play with. Let's try Windows activation, which we're going to have to do offline because it's not connected to the internet. Welcome to the Microsoft Product Activation Center. 
to help us improve the quality of our products, services, and... Oh, you can really slow down, it's ridiculous. ...and information collected on this call may be accessed by Microsoft affiliates, subsidiaries, and service providers internationally. To consent to recording or monitoring of this call, press 1. I do not consent. ...or to continue without recording or monitoring. <laughs> Thank you. This call will not be recorded or monitored. Good. Even though it is being recorded. Please enter the following number on your phone. Because it's online. Pad. Nine, zero, eight. Thank you. Welcome to Microsoft Product Hello. Activation. To activate Windows, press 1. To activate Office, there is a virtual assistant available on your Windows 10 or 11 device Ooh. to troubleshoot and activate your product. Click the Start button. Yes. In the list of apps, Look for Get Help and click on it to get started. No, rubbish. Talking Press rubbish. One if you would like to continue with phone system activation. Rover, can you help us? If you have previously upgraded to Windows 10 or 11, press 1. Otherwise, press 2. When you install Windows 10 for the mm, first not time helpful. on a device, you need a Windows 10 product key to complete activation. If you have a product I'm not you using Windows 10, press 1. Otherwise, press 2. Uh, yeah. All right. Here's how you can use your product key. First, click on the Windows Start button. But this is ridiculous. Next, click on Settings. Then, click Problem. on Update and Security. Next, click on the Activation tab. Ah. Uh. Then select change product key. I don't. And finally, I don't want type in your 25 don't character change product, the fucking key. product key. To hear that again, press 1. To continue, press 2. If this is resolving your issue, press 1. Eight, I've called them back, one. and it, I haven't Why missed any options. It looks like you really have to use Windows 10 or 11 to activate. Alright, here's how you can use your product key. First, click on the Windows Start button. Why is it. I, I don't. Click on settings. This is not affecting Next, the fucking pirates. This is just affecting security. people who bought the product. Next, click on the activation tab. Then select change product key. There is a virtual assistant available on your Windows 10. We've gone back. To troubleshoot and activate your product. I'm not on fucking Windows 10 or 11. In the list of apps, look for get help and click on it to get started. Press 1 if you would like to continue with phone system activation. Please hold while I transfer you to a Microsoft representative. Oh, this is ridiculous. I, I'm... Alright, okay. You probably can activate it if you speak to someone, but I can't be bothered. I don't want to be on the phone all day just to record a short video. So anyway... You will have noticed in the control panel that there's no security options to configure there, such as the Windows Firewall. I think Windows Media Player is version 8. Oh, as much as I like David Byrne, we can't play that because YouTube gets all upset about copyright, unfortunately. So yeah, Windows Media Player 8 is really consistent with XP. Like, it's really cool. And then by the time Windows XP went out of support, it had been upgraded to 11. And it just looks really out of place because it's like Vista-esque. IE is version 6, I think. Oh, wow, that's a blast from the past. Oh, it wants to open MSM browser just because I've rushed through the uh, wizard. Does anyone remember MSM browser? The bloody things are front end for IE. It just looks really weird. You're never going to connect, so don't even bother. Oh, there you go, it's failed. We're we getting the about window now. Yeah, version 6, so it really was. It sucked. IE6 was great when it first came out, but then they let it stagnate, and it, yeah. And then Firefox sort of took over, which is great. And then it faded into obscurity when Chrome came along, unfortunately. I still use Firefox. Windows Messenger. There you go, look, it's trying to get us to log in with our Microsoft account. You know, it's so bad when Windows 10 does this, but when XP did it, no one cared because they probably didn't even know. It's never going to work because it's not online. Ah, oh, Windows Messenger. That's just going to do that forever. I don't think we can actually look at the browser until we're connected. 
I don't care. Like, guess sign in. Oh, for goodness sake. No, it's going to need us to log in. That's a shame. I just wanted to look at the GUI. Never mind. I mean, yeah, that's about it, really. It's Windows XP. It's an earlier build. I just wanted to have a quick look at it. It's a shame we couldn't activate it. As I said, we probably could, but I'm not going to sit on my phone all day trying to explain the situation to someone in a call center. Let's do something really silly before we leave as well. Let's just pick the awful theme that I don't think anyone really liked. Ah, oh, it's I thought it's frozen up for a moment then. Why is that taking such a long time? How odd. There we go. Ah, it's not too bad actually, but I'm, I don't think I ever saw this out in the wild. I don't think I ever saw anyone using that out in the wild. <laughs> These were not made for widescreen resolutions, that's for sure. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Protect the consumers by including activation. <laughs> really? Who are they really protecting? Oh, I know. Their best interests. <laughs>